I guess the address has does it all. This is exactly the place where the late Pranam Mukherjee used to live once he retired as a president of India. But as long as he was in the Congress party, we know him as a troubleshooter. And it's right over here where the Congress president Malika Jun Kharge stays. And he's also now emerging as a troubleshooter. Last heard, he had brokered that deal of a truce between the two warring leaders of Karnataka. One, of course, is now the Deputy Chief Minister D.K. Shiv Kumar and the Chief Minister Siddharamaya. That show of strength, holding hands, hum saat saat hain. But his big challenge now, of course, has remained Rajasthan and I would also say Madhya Pradesh, which is also a problem of plenty. But focusing on Rajasthan and the question I'm asking all of you this week on one take is that if this truce comes a little late in the day, does it really last and does it work? Well, let's start with Punjab. You know, it was easier in Karnataka because it started much earlier, the planning that you have to put up with the show of strength. But in Punjab is what people are talking about, a predecessor to Rajasthan. Or Rajasthan is called Punjab 2.0. Now in the case of Punjab, kabhi haan, kabhi na, should be or should be not, Iske chalte, there was a lot of delay. Finally, they took a call that the chief minister would have to be changed. So Captain Amrinder Singh had to step down as the CM and the rest is history. Then Navjot Singh Sidhu was made the state congress chief. Not many people were happy with it. The choice of Charanjit Singh Channi as the CM face, despite that hug and all that jhappi on stage with Rahul Gandhi, that truce or that photo opportunity did not last long. Because when your basis is very shaky, your foundation is weak, it's very difficult to put up with a show of strength. Will that be what can happen in Rajasthan as well? If the Congress party had made up its mind initially that there has to be definitely a division of power or a rotation of power, perhaps the things would have not come to what it has in Rajasthan. Sources have said that in fact it was over 15 days delay in forming the government in Rajasthan because the party had written down to the details on what the rotation of power could be, how the division of power between Gehlot and Sachin Pilot will take place. We are moving closer to a state elections. The uncertainty remains despite the so-called truce or an attempt to forge a sense of unity. And that is because Rajasthan headed by two very strong-willed leaders, Ashok Gelot on one side, Sachin Pilot on the other. Both of them are equally ambitious. Both of them claim that they have a control over the larger number of MLAs and none of them are willing to back down. So in such a situation, Will it ever work? Well, Punjab example showed that it did not. Because one, it came a little bit too late. And second, no matter what you gave to each of those leaders, they would never ever be happy. Is this could be a similar case as far as Rajasthan is concerned? Now let's talk about the pros and cons. Ashok Gehlot, clearly many times chief minister, someone who has a control over the MLAs, wily, shrewd, he understands the nitty-gritty of administration and he also has an experience in governance being a CM. And therefore he has a hold over the bureaucrats and the preparation has already begun. In fact, there is a social media handle, it's bar Ashok Gelo. The implication is very clear that the face of the Congress party as CM will be Ashok Gelo. But top Congress sources tell us that's not what we want to do. We want to play safe and not announce any CM face. The other side is Sachin Pilot. You know, Sachin Pilot had to bear the burden of being called a rebel because many say he actually took that wrong step where he tried to flex his muscles and he went to a retreat or a resort in Manisar and there were just a handful of them. So in comparison to Ashok Gelot, he came across as a leader who did not have so many MLAs with him. Second, Ashok Gelot managed to sell this perception that Pilot was actually a rebel and he was doing all this under the dictation of the BJP. And the fact that the BJP leader seemed to be supporting Sachin Pilot did not help his case. Now what happened is that the Congress top leadership and particularly the Gandhis, they kept on assuring Sachin Pilot that you do your job, go out and campaign, we will do what we have assured you. So Sachin Pilot went and began to campaign. They seemed to be a temporary true citizen and no one was talking to no one. They maintained the distance. And Sachin Pilot was stripped of his post designation as Deputy Chief Minister and also as the State Congress Chief. That did not really help matters because things got worse between the two of them. And so worse that it actually led to 
पर्सनल नेम कॉलिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल अशोक गहलोत अक्यूजिंग सचिन पायलट ऑफ बींग पढ़ा लिखा निकम्मा जस्ट गुड लुकिंग एंड सो एंड सो फोर्थ In private, pilot too also would hit back, but publicly started doing so when one fine day he decided that enough is enough, and he went into the Jangharsh Yatra. Now, at that Yatra, Sachin Pallet made it very clear that I may not have that kind of a party machinery behind me because it was an unofficial Yatra, but I certainly can call the shots because I do have a large number of supporters with me. Let's not forget he belongs to a Gujar community, and the Gujar community matters in other states, the pole-bound states like Madhya Pradesh, in states like Maharashtra, Gujarat, Jammu and Kashmir. Which is why the Congress party is wary of talking tough to such an party because they don't want to take the chance. But will the desert storm ever subside in Rajasthan, or will the Congress party fall victim to this storm? And the larger question is that will Malikarjun Kharge ensure? that a show of strength or unity that he is working upon last till the end so far the track record of the party has been very poor as far as rajasthan is concerned and as i started out by saying that both pilot as well as gehlot are strong will which brings me to the other big question is can rahul gandhi actually be broker peace he managed to do it along with malikarjun kharge thereby assuming a role which sonia gandhi had done earlier in the case of karnataka Rahul Gandhi had failed as far as Punjab is concerned will Rajasthan be lucky will Madhya Pradesh be lucky and what is the real problem within the Congress party essentially the real problem in the Congress party is one the problem of plenty postponing the decision a tough decision which they feel it's better not to take but kab tak how long can it last and at the end of the day making false promises and making those false assurances you cannot do that because at the end of the day your bluff is exposed that is exactly the problem which happened in punjab which could happen in rajasthan and possibly in madhya pradesh as well so that's the question i'm asking this week and do give in your reactions on the social media timeline will rajasthan storm settle down or will it emerge to be a failure once the results come out for malikarjun kharge the congress president and for the rahul gandhi and the priyanka gandhi vadra too Thank you so much for watching.